Hi, this is Kathleen from Sunny Mountain Patterns. I'm going to show you how to measure your pattern pieces so you can figure out what your finished garment size is going to be. So I've already imported one of my pattern pieces. Um, I'm going to grab, I've ungrouped them by pressing shift control G or going up to object ungroup. So I'm grabbing the size I want. Um, you notice this size is still grouped together. So again, you can ungroup this if you want to. I don't know if you necessarily have to. So we're going to go to object ungroup or shift control on G. G. You don't have to do this, but if you want to move the pieces around, you can do it. So if you have, oh, Okay, I had a little bit of difficulty, Inkscape shut down on me. <laughs> so I'm going to do a different pattern. So this is uh, for one of my shorts, my pebble, short, pebble shorts pattern. I'm gonna click and drag the size I need over so I can work with it. You can just leave this. Uh, if there is seam allowance, you might consider doing this where you go to object, fill and stroke. So we want to go to stroke style and we want to bump the stroke style up by double what the seam allowance is. So in this case, the seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch. So I need um, six, too much math. Uh, I think three quarters. Let me just make sure that's right. So by eight times two. Yeah, three quarters because you want three eighths on either side of the line. So that the line will be the center. Um, 0.75 changes to millimeters, centimeters, two inches. Okay, let's see if that worked. Okay, so that's super thick. The outside line, uh, the inside line is going to be this, the stitching line. The outside line is ignore it. So this is just to do the measurements if you have seam allowance. If you don't have seam allowance, or if you want to go ahead and do the math, then just subtract double the seam allowance. So say I wanted to know what the waist circumference is going to be. <clears throat> I would go to this measure. Uh, there should be a ruler right here. Looks a little ruler uh, measurement tool or you press M and we're going to click on Remember, uh, for this case. Sorry, I keep using the illustrator. <laughs> Shortcut keys. You can zoom in either by pressing the zoom here on the right, the lower right hand corner, pressing up and down the and down buttons, or change the zoom by highlighting and manually typing in, or you press uh, control and use the scroll button. It's shift if you are in Illustrator. But Illustrator does not have this function here, the measurement tool. So we're gonna use the crosshairs and put it here somewhere and click and drag straight down. If you want it to be completely uh, vertical, or horizontal, you press control as you're doing it, it'll keep it vertical so you won't have like this off angle. But if you don't care, you just want a rough idea, that will tell you it is 20, 230 millimeters wide. Now, if you don't want to see it in millimeters because you're American and don't know how to convert like me, you want to go to File, Document Properties, or Shift Control D and change these units here. Oh, sorry, display units to inches. You don't have to do anything else. You just close it automatically. So it's 9.09 .09 inches. Now this is the front. So it's one side of, I'm sorry, this is the back, one side of the back. So you actually want to double that for the back and then take a measurement for the front. So that's nine inches. We're going to take measurements for the front, which uh, in this case is a little bit challenging because I've got, I've also got a pocket, which is going to extend out here. So if you need to extend out the pocket, you can either move a pocket in place so they have an the entire waistband, in which case it would be, oh, now you have to ungroup. So shift control G, oh, control G, sorry, shift control G is, is the, you know what, I don't know shortcuts on escape anymore. Object, ungroup, it is shift control G. I don't know why it doesn't like me. So in this case, we're gonna need this pocket up here. Notice that I have snap-on so that uh, these pieces will snap together in their center pieces where the line should be in the exact middle. If you don't have that feature, you want to go ahead and click on the right-hand corner. There's a enable snapping. Just click that. So you can either rotate the pattern piece to the left or the pocket to the right. 
you can, by pressing H. Oh, sorry, V. No, you know what? Neither one's are gonna work. Sorry, that's just for mirroring. I keep forgetting. Click it again. Grab this and hold the control so it shifts every 15 degrees. Or you can freehand it. So we're gonna uh, put these two together. We wanna align the outer lines, yes? So now we have a complete piece. The other way you can do it is if instead of putting the pocket, you could just guesstimate, which is not gonna give you as accurate. Um, you wanna make sure it snaps to the center. Hold control so it's straight, assuming that this piece is straight. If not, uh, you're gonna have to do something slightly different and up there and that will complete your length if uh, however you had a piece you had to extend here say you had a fly uh, you would of course have to eyeball it and continue on uh, you know just make sure it's not wildly off like this angle so you can do either one press f1 to get this arrow back to clicking drag that looks pretty good. And then you can do the same thing here. Get the ruler or the press M and, oh, sorry. Edit, redo. And I get off the ruler. So the other one was nine, right? We're gonna take this measurement. If I could just remember <laughs> to do it from the inside, that would help. So that's nine inches total from front. So it's the exact same width. Okay, so now we have half of the front and half of the back. We need to double it, because the nine plus nine, which is 18. I hope that was right. Double that because it's left and right sides when you put it together. And this is not including the seam allowance. And this is already too much math. I have 200 degrees and math is not my strong point. So nine plus nine, that's the diameter from, like say your right side from front and back. Now we need to do the left and right side. So times by two. So 36 inches total diameter for this size, uh, excluding seam allowance. If you do a three eighths of a seam allowance. Now say if you wanted to figure out what it would be with a smaller seam allowance, you can, or a larger seam allowance, say you want to do a half an inch, you need to figure out the difference between the three eighths of a seam inch seam allowances, multiply by the, by one, two, eight. Yeah, because you get two seam allowances on each side, there's four pieces times eight. And subtract that number from this. So remember 36 inches is the diameter with a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So if you wanted to bump it up to half an inch, the difference between half an inch and 3 eighths of an inch seam allowances is uh, 1 eighths, I believe that's 0.125. So remember we have eight seam allowances because there's four pieces in this pants. There's a front left, a front right, back left, back right. All of them have two seam allowances each. So times this by eight. So it's a one inch difference or a one inch decrease. So the 36 inches would actually be 35 inches if you bumped it up to half an inch. Seam allowance, for example. Now, say you didn't want to do all this rigmarole of making a seam allowance. And this is the quick and dirty way of doing the seam allowance. If you want to see my seam allowance video, you can, of course, look that up. Uh, but that's a bit more involved to do the different options. So say you did not want to do all the seam allowance rigmarole, you just do a little bit more math. So we're going to do the same thing, except we're not going to add the seam allowance. You're going to take the measurement tool, pressing control so it's straight up and down. You do the front and uh, the back. You have to do the same idea with the, the line here, the lines, but this just happens to provide a very nice alignment tool. So they're both... Uh, 9.4 and then this one is about 9, 9.4 9 as well. You can zoom in um, holding the control button and then if you have a scroll, to scroll in. So it's about 9.4 each. You have to zoom out to get it all in place. Let's try this one. Okay, you, you undo that. All right, take another measurement. 
9.6 plus 9.4, give or take. It should actually be the same. It's just this one's at an angle slightly because I didn't do it perfectly. So let's do the left and right sides. You have a choice. You can either delete the seam allowance now from each measurement or add them up and then delete the two seam allowances and then double that. Um, I would suggest deleting the seam allowance first and then adding them together so you don't have to remember to keep track of the seam allowance. So remember, one piece has two seam allowances. You have the crotch line here and the side seam. This is, of course, dependent on the type of garment you're cutting. If they have more seam allowances, then you're going to have to add more. So 9.5 uh, minus 2 times 3 eighths. So 3 eighths of an inch uh, times 2 is 0.75. So the 9.5 should be minus 0.75. That seems a bit weird because I think it was 8.4 for the other one. Oh, I actually did the seam allowance. I must have done something incorrect when I did the seam allowance. Oh, the baby's up. So basically we double this and then add on. So that's the left and right backs. And then add on the... Um, the 9.4 minus 0.75. You know what? I know what happened. Uh, because we're accounting for... Yeah, no, no, it's fine. Um, that's the two ways of doing it. There's just something demonstrably wrong with my math in one of these. <sighs> okay, never mind. I forgot I took a different size. <laughs> I totally forgot. So this is not going to match up between this thick line and this red line because I took a different size. So uh, that's why it's not messed up. I totally forgot about that. It should theoretically match up if you took the same size. I just didn't want to back out all of this work for the size 16. So that's how you take the measurements to figure out what the diameter is going to be. Of course, these are much larger than a normal kid because this is meant to have elastic in it. But you can tell, uh, you know, if it's going to fit the crotch line or say you need to figure out how long the waist to ankle is to make sure that it will fit your kid. That's a really easy way to do it is just go from one flat line, parallel control to the other flat line. And now you know it's going to be, I believe it's a seven or 24.11 inches. Of course, there there's a bit of hemming here of one inch double fold so you minus two inches off of that and it's 22 inches and you can measure your kit and see if it's going to hit their ankle or if it's going to be too long or too short and then you can of course lengthen or shorten um, by cutting here but that's a different tutorial okay so this is kathleen with sunday mounted patterns i'm showing you how to use inkscape to measure your pattern so you can figure out what your finished garment size is now that's not the same thing as your actual fit so it's going to be of course larger than the body because it's got to accommodate curves it's got to accommodate three dimensions you know organs and such and um, it, it may accommodate also having stretch fabric uh, there's also design ease so that your kid or you whoever's wearing clothes can actually move around which uh you know apparently is a very good thing to do so thank you for listening i hope this helps bye